The thought of creating your own website can be really overwhelming and all too often entrepreneurs think that they need to shell out a small fortune for a custom website to build a professional online presence. But times have changed and creating a website is easier than you think and your head no longer needs to spin over coding or words like HTML, JavaScript and CSS. I remember my first website, it was an absolute disaster and even worse it hid behind a coming soon page for the longest time ever, which meant I wasn't building relationships, getting new clients and making money. And that is something that I don't want for your business. That's why in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a simple, easy to follow process to get your website launched before the end of today. Hit that like button if you're tired of hiding behind a coming soon page and comment below live if you are ready to finally launch your website. Before I open a new browser to begin showing you how to create your very first WordPress website, I want to explain some terms to you. So I'm going to liken these all to creating your very own house. So the first is a domain. A domain is the site address. So this is the address that you live at. Then we've got hosting and hosting is the land where your house is built on. This is where your web files are stored. Then we have WordPress. So WordPress is the actual structure of your house. So this is the foundation of your website. Then you have a theme and that is the interior designing of your house. So you can switch it up and change it as much as you like. And then the last term is plugins. And this I actually like to liken to the apps on your phone. So they extend the functionality of your iPhone or your Android phone. You can get a plugin for anything that you want to do on your website website. Okay, so let's dive on into my browser and open a new tab and I'm going to show you how to create your very first WordPress website. Okay, so here I am on hostinger.com and Hostinger is a hosting company that offers both domain registration and hosting packages. And why I love hosting it so much is because they offer an H panel, whereas most host providers offer a C panel. The H panel is really user friendly and makes it super easy to install WordPress. Now landing on this website, you can see they have a special $2.99 a month. You get a free domain and lifetime SSL. So an SSL is a security certificate that is required on all domains and once you install it on your domain, you'll see this little padlock in the top left hand corner. So if you sign up for more than one month at a time, you're going to get that free domain and a domain name is usually around 15 to $20 a year to pay for. So if you click on the get started button, you'll see everything that's included with this web hosting package. You get unmetered traffic, um, you get 100 gigs of storage unlimited SSL and a free domain and then the free email addresses. So you get up to a hundred domain based email addresses, which is really great if you are on a budget and you are just starting a new business. If for example, you do have a bigger budget, then I do recommend keeping your email separate to your web hosting and going with someone like Google Workspace to host your email addresses. You don't want your web hosting to go down and then you're losing your website and your emails all at once. So it is a good plan, but if you are on a budget and you are a new business, then this is absolutely fine. What you're going to do is you're going to click on select. That's then going to take you to the cart page. And this is where you can choose your period of payments. You can pay monthly, 12 months, 24 months, and 48 months. Of course, the more months that you pay, the more savings you're going to make. And if you pay more than one month at a time, you're going to get a free domain for the first year. Now, just to note that when the plan renews, I'm going to be paying $8.99 a month. With the 24, it's $7.99 and with the 48, it's $6.99. You can select your option, you can scroll down and if you go to the select payment, you can see what you're going to be paying today. So for the 48 months, you're going to pay $143. If you choose 12 months, which is what I'm going to go with, then you're going to pay $35.88 um, at the moment and that's for my domain name for the whole year, a setup fee and 
for hosting for 12 months. So that's pretty much a steal for one year of your website. I think it's really great. And another bonus with Hostinger, it's a 30 day money back guarantee. So if I'm not happy with the speed or anything with this host provider, I can always get my money back and go to another host provider. So I think that's really great. So the next step in the process is to create an account. So I can either link this to Google or I can pop in an email address. So this is exactly what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in my email address and then we're going to go to select payment and I'm going to pay by PayPal. I'm then going to submit my secure payment and I'm going to go through the process of making the payment for my new hosting account. Okay, so I have made payment. I am now being redirected to the control panel or what they call the H panel, which is their really easy to use hosting panel. So now I'm going to set a new password for my account. Okay, and I have set the password and now I can go through the welcome process. So it starts by just asking me a few questions. So I'm going to go through that. So I'm going to click start now and it asks me who am I creating the website for? So we are creating the website for ourselves. So we're going to say I'm creating it for myself and who is creating the website? Is it yourself? Are you hiring a developer or other? And I'm going to say I'm building it myself. And which type of website it is it is a business website and do you need help building your website say no thank you because i've got nicola on hand and i'm going to walk through this video and then the next thing is migrate or create a new website so we are going to be actually building a new website so it's starting it with wordpress so we are going to click select if you are migrating your website you'll click this option i'm going to click select here and then you can select a platform so i'm going to select wordpress here and if you want to add WooCommerce, which is the e-commerce plugin that most people use on WordPress, you can tick this box, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to create an administrator email and a password. So I'm going to pop in a password there and then I'm going to click continue. Okay, so here it's asking you which look we prefer. Um, I'm going to skip this because in this video tutorial guide, I'm going to show you which is my preferred and best theme to use on WordPress and how to customize that for your business. So you'll click, click skip. I don't need a template. And this is where you're going to name your website and claim your domain name. Now, remember your domain name is your website address and this is how people are going to find you. So for example, mine is nicolatweed.com. Just some tips when choosing your domain name is you want to keep it as short and memorable as possible and in line with your business. So you're going to click select free domain and then you're going to pop in your desired domain name. So I'm going to call it NT web test site. And then you're going to choose your suffix. So your suffix could be something that's in line with where you're based in the world or a .com, which is what most people use. Now, if you do go with .com, you'll see that it renews at a higher price per year versus something like IN. So I'm going to choose .com and I'm going to click search and that's going to search through to see if my domain name is actually available. Okay, so we can see that the domain is available. So we are going to click continue. Okay, so now it's time to finish setting up to my domain name. I can choose my server location and I'm just can, gonna confirm all of this information and then click finish setup. Okay, so there's a couple more domain registration information that needs to be filled in so I can choose what country I am based in and I can say it's personal and click next step and then I can pop in my contact details and then I can click finish registration. Okay, so my domain name is being registered and once it registers, it will pop up with the website. Okay, so the registration process has been completed. And as you can see through that initialization phase, the um, great H panel from Hostinger automatically installs your SSL certificate. So remember I mentioned that is your security certificate. It's a little padlock you'll see next to your domain name. It can take a couple of minutes to install. So initially when you go into your WordPress account, you might not see it installed. Once it has been installed, you'll be kicked out of WordPress and you'll have to re-log into it. 
moment. Okay, so you can start building your website with WordPress right away. So you can go and edit your website or you can take a look around at the control panel or the H panel. So let's have a look at editing our website. We will look at the control panel on another video. So let's start with editing our WordPress website. So we're gonna click edit website. That's then going to open our WordPress website in a new tab. Okay, so first thing is to log into your WordPress website, you will always go to your domain forward slash WP dash admin. Now, once you go to WP dash admin, then you'll be presented with a, a login screen that looks like this. And this is where you're going to put in your username and your password that we created when we um, set up our WordPress account in the H panel. So you'll put in your username, and you will click login. So once you log in, you will be presented with the dashboard. So I'm just gonna close this incognito window and show you that this is the WordPress dashboard. So this is the WordPress dashboard and whenever you log into your WordPress website, this is what's going to pop up. So let's get familiar with navigating this WordPress dashboard. So the first thing that I want you to learn about is actually viewing your website. So to view your website, you'll come to the top here um, where it says your website name and you're going to click on visit website. That's then going to open up your website and this is what browsers are going to see on the front end. So this is exactly what my website looks like now. So if anyone navigates to ntwebtestsite.com, this is what it's going to look like. So if you want to get back to your dashboard to add pages, posts, etc., you're going to come up here to the top and you're going to click on dashboard. That's then going to go back to the dashboard we were in before. The next thing is to get familiar with everything here on the left hand side. So with the H panel, it automatically installs some additional plugins that don't come with every standard WordPress installation. So those are things like WP forms, which is creating a contact form, opt-in monster, which is all to do with campaigns and collecting email addresses. Um, then you've also got all in one WordPress mid migration and SEO and Lightspeed cache. Okay. So those are just additional things that come with the H panel installation with Hostinger. So here is posts. Now post is where you're going to create your blog post. So you're going to add new posts here. Then you've got pages and this is where you're going to add pages. So pages are things like your about page, your services page, your homepage and your contact page. And your blog posts are content that is updated maybe on a weekly or a monthly basis. Okay, so the other places that you need to get familiar with is adding a theme and a theme is, as I mentioned before, is kind of the interior designing of your house. This is the look and feel of your website to So to add in a new theme, you're going to come to appearance and you're going to come to themes. Okay, this is then going to show you which one is active and which other ones are installed. Now to find a new theme, you can click up at the top here, add new, or you can click here so I can click there. And then you can go through the WordPress listing of all different themes that you can install on your website, or you can actually purchase a premium theme and upload it here. The next place is plugins. So plugins are like apps and they're apps for your WordPress website. They'd extend the functionality of your WordPress website. And there are hundreds and hundreds of different plugins for you to choose from. So if you want your WordPress website to do something, you can probably find a plugin that will do it for you. So if you click on add new at the top here, you will see all these different plugins that you can install on your website. Um, you can actually click on them and then it's going to give you a brief overview of what the plugin does. It will show you as well when it was last updated. So it was last updated 10 months ago. You can also see the reviews and screenshots of exactly what it does. And then you can click install now and then that will install the plugin on your WordPress website and allow that functionality to happen on your website. Okay, so let us start 
building out our new website. So we have purchased our domain, we have purchased our hosting package, and now we have installed WordPress. The next step in the process is to actually choose a theme. And I have a personal preference and one that I absolutely love. It is the Cadence theme. I love the Cadence theme because it is easy to customize. It is a very simple theme and it's great for speed. And in addition to that, they offer starter templates. Now I'll show you how easy starter templates are, but if you go to their starter templates um, link on their website, you'll see all these free and pro starter templates that you can choose from. So it doesn't require any coding. All you do is install it and then you basically change out the images and the text and your website is ready to go. I do also have some of these available on my own website. So if you are looking for something that is more feminine, then you can check it out on my website. These are Cadence Starter Child themes. Um, I've got five different themes for you to choose from. So we are going to go ahead and we are going to install the Cadence theme. So we're going to come to Appearance and we are going to come to Themes. We're then going to click Add New at the top. And we're either going to come here to search themes and type in Cadence, or we are going to scroll down and find the Cadence theme, which looks like this. And we're going to click install, and then we are going to activate it once it has been installed. So we'll click on the activate button. Okay, so now that we've activated the Cadence theme, you will get this pop-up that says, thanks for choosing the Cadence theme. Do you want to install the Cadence starter templates? And I'm going to say, yes, this is a plugin. It's a plugin that allows you to then install any of their starter templates. So I have installed that, it has been activated, and then it's going to redirect me to the starter templates landing page. So if you can't find this page, don't worry, you can always come to appearance and then under cadence, you'll see it under there, which is starter templates. So you can either go to their website and go through their starter templates. And if you click on their starter templates, it opens in a new tab and you can actually preview the starter template and go through each page. So let's preview this one. You can see each page and you can scroll through it and see exactly what each starter template offers. So the starter template that I have decided I am going to install on my website here is the cleaning service one. So this is a pretty simple um, starter template. It's perfect for entrepreneurs and service-based businesses, and it's optimized for trust building, lead generation, and conversions. So what you can do is you can kind of go through everything down here, uh, the features, the requirements, etc. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install this on my website. So let's go back to our website and there is my cleaning service. Um, you can actually go to the drop down here and you can click on free only and that will show you the free ones. You can also sign up to a Cadence um, yearly subscription and that will give you access to the pro Cadence starter templates. So let's go for this cleaning service. So I'm going to click on that. That's then going to pop up um, and then I'm going to import the full site. So when I import the full site, it's going to import the pages, it's going to import the images and the colors, and it's also going to import the Cadence Blocks plugin. And that is something that I'm going to walk through later on in this video. So I'm going to click Full Site Import. Then it's going to bring up the Import Starter Template pop up, and it's going to have a couple of drop downs here. So it's got the import details, um, and it's just saying required plugins, uh, cadence, so that will be installed. And there's some advanced settings as well if you don't want to import um, what it looks and feels like in terms of the fonts and the colors, you can always untoggle that. And if you don't want to import the content, then you also don't have to do that. If you would like to subscribe to their newsletter you can also do that and subscribe but you can um, you can skip that and then just click skip start importing and that's then going to check the installation it's going to start installing the plugins that are required it's going to import the customizing um, and it's going to import the content. Um, now, this really depends on how big the um, starter template is, is how long it takes, and in addition to the hosting package that you have provided. Now, hosting is a really great host provider, so this process shouldn't take too long.
the import has been completed and when it has been completed, you'll see this finished view your site. Now, if you click on your view your site, you'll see that your website now looks completely different to how we looked at it last time. So now it looks exactly like the starter template. Everything has been populated with the images and the text and the colors, etc. So now it's time for you to just go in, change your logo, change your colors, your fonts, and put in your own images and your content. So let's start doing that. So the first step in the process is to insert your logo and customize the colors and fonts to your business branding. So I have here in a notes folder, just my colors. So these are my dark blue colors, bright blue, light blue, and then my fonts. So this is a Google font. And the great thing with Cadence is it comes already installed with all the Google fonts. And I highly recommend you do use a Google font just because the load time will be a lot less. There is a process where you can use the Cadence Premium Fonts plugin and you can upload your own font files if you do use something that is not a Google font. The next thing is to also have your logo. I suggest actually having your logo in an SVG file. Um, SVG file just means it's a lot crisper and I'll actually show you that process of how to do that. And here is my logo go here and that is a PNG file if you can't make it a SVG file. So let's first put in our logo and I'll show you as well how to make an SVG logo. So we're going to come here and there's two places to get to the customizer where you're going to change the colors and the logo. It's either here if you're on the page or you can come back to your dashboard and you can come to appearance and then under appearance, you're gonna click on customize. Then that, that is going to open up the cadence customizer and this is where you're going to put in your logo and your colors and your fonts. So here, this is what Cadence has is the header and the footer builder. So if you hover over the header section, any part of the header section, you'll see these little pencil tools come up. And if you click on an element, then the header builder is going to come up at the bottom and you'll be able to move any of the elements around and elements are things like logo, your menu, a button or some HTML. So with the elements, if you click on the icon here, so the little settings icon, you'll notice that the left hand side changes. So if I click on this primary navigation, you'll notice that it changes on the left hand side. Likewise, with the button, it changes on the left hand side. And this is the customizer where you'll be able to, for example, on the button, change the label, the URL and the design on this second tab here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change out the logo so we can either click on the settings here or we can come up to the top here and click on this pencil icon. So we're going to click on that pencil icon. You'll notice this site ad identity pops up. We're then going to remove this cleaning image and we're going to select a logo. So we're going to click on that select logo and we can either choose an image from our media library. So our media library is an area on our WordPress website where all our images are stored. So this has all come from our starter template or we can click upload files, select files. That's then going to open up the files on our computer. And I've got a specific folder on my desktop for the cleaning company and I have a PNG logo. Now, what I mentioned before was that that I highly recommend you rather use an SVG logo if your designer can provide that to you or you can create one on Canva and I'll show you in a moment how to do that. So for now we're going to choose the PNG logo and we're going to click open. That's then going to upload the logo. We're then going to click select and we're going to crop this image because it's a PNG. We are able to crop it with an SVG. We can't. So I want to crop it so that it's just above those little stars. And then I'm going to click crop image and then that's going to upload my image. Now you might notice here there is a logo max width and there is a slider. So you can use the slider to make your logo bigger and smaller. So I'm going to make it a tad bit bigger. You'll notice as it goes even bigger, 
here it gets quite blurry so this is where the SVG actually comes in better so I'm going to give it a something like through 230 sizing and in cadence you'll also notice these little icons you've got a desktop icon a tablet icon and a, a mobile icon so you, if you click on this you'll see what it looks like on a tablet and then you'll also see what it looks like on a mobile device and you can change the setting depending on what device people are looking at your website on. So if I want my logo to be really tiny on my mobile device, so something like that, I can just use the slider and I can slide up and down and that will change what my logo looks like on my iPhone or my Android phone. So once I've made changes, I can go back to my desktop by clicking on the desktop icon and then clicking publish. So now I want to show you how to create an SVG file using Canva. So I'm going to go to Canva, so canva.com, and you will need the premium version of Canva in order to create an SVG file. So if you've created your logo yourself in Canva, like I have done so here, what you can do is you can come to share at the top right here. You're then going to click on download and under file type, you're going to choose SVG and then you're going to click on transparent background. Now, if it's got this little crown here, that means it's the pro version. So you will need to upgrade your version of Canva. I think it's around $10 a month and it's well worth it. So we're going to download that file. We're going to save it on our desktop or somewhere on our computer. And that is the file we're going to upload. So I already have an SVG file, so I'm going to just click save. And there is my SVG file. Now we are going to come back to our websites um, and we're going to upload that SVG file to our media library. We can't come here and automatically upload it. Unfortunately, WordPress does not allow us to do that. So what we do need to do is we need to come out of our customizer and we do need to come to plugins and we need to install a plugin that allows us to upload SVG files. So from our dashboard, we're going to come to plugins here and we're going to click on add new. So remember plugins are like apps, extend the functionality of our WordPress website. So what we need our WordPress website to do is to be able to accept SVG files. So in search plugins here on the right hand side, we are going to type in SVG and we're going to click enter. That's then going to search through the list of WordPress plugins, bring up those that are most relative to SVG support. And then we are going to go through this and choose one that's going to allow us to upload an SVG file. So I'm going to go with this SVG support. We can see it was last updated a month ago and it does have 1 million active installations. Those are the kinds of things you want to look for when installing plugins. You don't want to just install any random plugin. It's worth looking at the reviews, looking when it was last updated and if it is compatible with your version of WordPress. So we'll click install now and once it's installed, we will click on activate. So once we've activated that, we now know that our WordPress website will accept SVG files. So we can go to our media library here and we can click add new. Remember our media library is where all the images of our website are stored. So we can select a file here and we can go to our desktop, find our SVG file and click open. Okay, so that has now uploaded our company logo. If we actually go to the media library, I just wanna show you here, um, this is an SVG file and this is a PNG. You can see the difference in quality already, how much crisper this SVG file is. So now we wanna make sure that we are using this SVG file instead of the PNG file on our website. So we're going to go to appearance and come to customize. And then, in the header builder, we are going to click on the pencil tool and we are going to change the logo to the SVG file. So we're going to select the SVG file, click select. We cannot crop it, so we will skip the cropping at the bottom here. And there we go. So now when we start to make it bigger, you can see that the quality stays the same. So I'm going to reduce it to 260 and there we go. We have our logo in place and it is an SVG file and it's pretty crisp. 
Okay, so the next step in the process is to make sure that the branding on the website is in line with our business branding. So we need to input the colors and the fonts that come from our style guide. So I highly recommend that you always create a style guide for your website that includes your logo, your colors and your fonts. And with Cadence, it comes with all the Google fonts installed on your website already. So it makes it really easy for you to select the fonts. So let's go ahead Head and we're going to come back here and we're going to start looking at the colors of the website. So here you'll see this first tab, which is colors and fonts. So we're going to go for the colors and Cadence has a global palette and a really, really great blog post that shows you how to use this global palette. So the global palette is made up of accents to accent colors so these when you think about it is your buttons they're more warmer colors um, they attract the eye and then you've got four contrast colors which are your headings and your paragraph fonts the things that you read that your your browsers will be reading got to make it really easy for your browsers to read the text on your website and then you've got your base colors which are your background colors so you can have a read through this which just explains all the colors and gives you some color palette examples and cool gray examples that you can use so if we come back to the customizer, this is where we can add in our accent colors. So like I showed you before, I've got my colors here. So I've got these H colors that I've taken from my logo, these hex code colors that I've taken from my logo. So I can pop those in. So I want this bright blue color to be here. So I click on that. I paste in the color. You can see how it changes and how it changes here on the front end as well. So I can come here and I want this lighter blue color on the accent and then the text, I want it to be the darker blue color, which is the same as the text in my logo. Okay, you can see how that now changes on the front end. However, there are certain points that don't change. For example, like this button didn't change. And that's because I this has been defined on the actual button. So the button element. So if I click here, you'll see this changes on the left hand side. I can then go to the design on the design tab and I can choose specific colors. Otherwise I can just reset the values and then that is going to take the colors from my global palette. So let's go back to this and let's make it that color and make it that color. And if I reset it, it goes back to my global color palette. So that palette that we defined in the beginning. Okay, so you can do that for this as well. So there is a design tab and I can reset the navigation colors or I can choose whatever color I want there at the top. Remember when you make those changes to the colors and to your logo, you click publish. That's then going to go live on the front end of your website. So let's go back now and look at our typography. You'll find typography in the colors and the fonts. So this is the third tab here, which is typography. And you've got your base font, which is your paragraph font. And then you've got your heading font, which you can define. So I am going to choose a font here and I'm going to choose the Arial font. But if you scroll down here, you can see all these different Google fonts that you can choose from. So let's choose one like this one. So Allegra, you can see how it changes on the front end and we can choose do the same for the font family for your headings so click on that and let's choose that one we can see how that changes I don't really like that that's not great <laughs> Okay, so that's a great font. You can see how that changes and we can see how this changes as well. So now the website should start to look a lot more like the branding of your business. So the next phase of the website is to now actually go into each specific page, change the images and change the content. So we're going to click publish. We're going to click close here. And then we're going to head to our pages. So our website is made out of pages. And once we click on pages, if you've imported all the content from your starter templates, you'll see each page pop up here. So we're going to look at customizing the home page first. So we will hover over this home page and we will click on edit. 
Okay, so once we click on edit, this homepage is going to come up and you will see all the content that exists between the header and the footer builder. Okay, so this page has been built with Cadence Blocks and the Gutenberg Editor. So I'm going to explain how to use the Gutenberg Editor and the Cadence Blocks and how you can really get familiar and navigate around your pages and editing your pages really quickly. So there's three places that I highly recommend or there's kind of four places that you need to get familiar with. So if I click on this here, all parts that places that you need to get familiar with is the first is the hierarchy. So the hierarchy shows you exactly how the this specific section is laid out. So we can see that you've got your page, so it's your home page. Then there is a row. So if we think about it, your whole website is built out of rows and within rows there are columns or sections and in those sections are um, elements such as a heading, a button, an image, etc. Okay, so we want to drill down specifically to change this image with the glove. So if we click on that, we can now see it's a page, a row. Within that row there is a section or kind of like a column and then we have an advanced image element. Okay, so that's the first place you want to get familiar with. The next place is here on the right hand side and that is the block customizer. So a block or an element is like an image or a button or a heading or testimonials etc. And as we go through this video, you'll see me going through different blocks. So here on the right hand side is the block customizer and this is where you can change what this block looks like. So it might be if it's a heading, you'll be able to change the color of the heading, um, the font, you'll be able to change the sizing, the letter spacing, etc. If it's a button, you can change where it links to, you can change the hover effect, the fonts, etc. And likewise with an image, you can change um, the sizing of the image, you can change spacing settings, border settings, link settings, etc. And we'll go through a few of these blocks after after I've showed you the third and the fourth place that you need to get familiar with. So the third place is this plus icon which is your block inserter. So if I click on this that's then going to bring up all the blocks you can add to a page. So like I mentioned before blocks could be like an image, it can be a button, it can be a text, it can be an icon list, it can be a form, a countdown etc and you've got way more as you scroll down and because we are using cadence blocks we have all of these extras. So that was a plugin that got automatically installed when we started using the starter templates. Okay, and the fourth and the last place you want to get familiar with is in line with this hierarchy at the bottom. So here it's the list format, the list view of your hierarchy. And so we can see here we've got rows and within those rows we have sections and within those sections we have blocks like an advanced image. Then we've got another row and another section and there we've got a count up. So if I click on the count up, we'll scroll down to that specific block and we can see it there. And then you'll notice here the design, the customizer on the right changes and that's where you can change this. So I can change this number. So the count up is going to obviously then stop at 12. Okay, so those are the four sections that you want to get familiar with. So I'm going to make some changes and you can follow, follow along and I'll show you and how each kind of block works. I'm not going to go through each specific block on Cadence, but I'm just going to customize this home page to make it look a bit different to the original starter templates. And you can see how it starts to come alive. So the first thing we can see here in this row, so we want to specifically drill down to the row, is that there is an, a background image and an overlay color of this light blue. Now I don't like this background image, I want to add in a new image and I want to change the overlay settings. So once when I've selected this row layout, you'll notice the block designer comes up here on the right hand side, so the block customizer. We can then start changing things. So we can look at the background settings here and we can see there is actually a background color 
and then we've got our background overlay settings. Now the overlay is the actual image and the background color is there is the actual background. So I can click on this select color and I can rather choose that color. You can see how it changes. Um, we can also change um, the opacity. So just dragging that, let's make it a bit lighter. And then we can come down here and we can remove this image and select an image. We can either choose one from our media library or we can go to upload files, select files, go to our images and choose one that we have downloaded from say for example apps unsplash or one that we've done in a professional photo shoot. So if we look at this we've got our cleaning photo, we'll click open that's then going to open the image and then we are going to select that image We'll see now it pops in there. We can actually move this around so then it changes the location. Um, you can't really see this very well. There's an opacity here so we can increase the opacity, which, yeah, I think maybe that's too much. That's a bit better. Okay, so that's the row block. Now we want to change this image here. So we click on that. We can see advanced image comes up. We can see the block customizer here on the right hand side and we can click close image and we can select an image there and let's go to upload files select files and choose a different image let's see what what do we have available to us this one so we'll click open that will then open the image uploaded to your website we make sure we actually optimize that image first we'll click select and you can see that then goes in there. So if you want, you can use the fixed ratio and you can change it. You can see how that goes there. Let's do that. Let's make it a square. Okay, so that looks great there. Okay, so that's changing an image and a background. So now we want to change some text. So I've actually pulled up a local cleaning business here and I'm going to copy some information from here and I'm gonna put it into the website. So let's paste over this information. So we'll paste and match style and we'll come back here and we will just change this information. And paste there we go okay so specialize let's make that an s okay so now let's look at the button so if we click on that that then opens at the advanced button we can look at the button one settings um, if we click on this we can then change the link so if we want it to link to let's say for example the about page which we have already created we can type in about and then that's going to go to the about page we can also change the border colors. We can change the background settings, etc. So you can really change whatever you want. We don't want this button. So what we're going to do is click on it. You'll see these three dots and we're going to remove the advanced button. Okay, so this has two sections here. You can remove this other section if you want. So this is where I would use the list view and I would click on this drop down and I would go here. And then I would come here to this three buttons and then I would click on this button here and remove the section. So what I would do is come to the row layout here that will then change here and I would just reduce it to one column. And then that will remove that section. So let's close that there. And we can scroll down our website and everything is basically the same. So if I click on that, that is an advanced image and I'll just go ahead, I will remove this image, I'll select an image and I can upload a file from my desktop. So let's choose another file click open that will then upload my image. I will select my image and then that will upload it there. And if you want, again, you can use a fixed ratio just so it fits in the right size. Again, there's a button and 
more text there that you can change. So it's very much um, all the same. It's just some mod just some elements and then it's just about customizing those elements. So once you have updated and changed each element on your website and it's in line with the content of your um, business, then you'll just simply click update that will then update the page and you can click view page and you can see what your website is looking like on the front end. Now, if, for example, you may not need a specific section that is part of a stem starter template, all you're going to do is go back to editing your page. You're going to find that specific row. So let's say, for example, it is this one here, or no, let's go down to this one here. You're going to find the row layout. You're gonna click on the three dots and you are going to remove that layout and then you're just going to update. And you can view that page and then you will notice that specific row has gone from your website. Okay, so that is the simple process of customizing it with the cadence blocks and the Gutenberg editor. If you're still feeling overwhelmed and you have no idea what to put on your website, what domain to pick, then don't worry, I am here for you. You can grab my step-by-step -step course Launch with WordPress by going to the link on your screen now. Launch with WordPress is my six-week signature course for freelancers, creatives, and new business owners that want to create a WordPress website without the tech headaches and the solo DIYing. You'll love Launch with WordPress if you want to get your website up and running before the end of the day. You're tired of constantly Googling the answer. You're ready to up level with your website. You're a creative business that has so much potential, but you need a website like yesterday. So be sure to click and sign up today.